Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today is the, um, what are we, the 3rd of July, 2017. It's the Niantis User Group. So myself and, uh, myself, Andy Wilton, and uh, John Hickey. Um, uh, so yeah, welcome. As, as always, any questions, which I know we've already got some already, uh, ideas, uh, problems, uh, raise your hand, we'll get the mics open, and uh, we'll, we'll cover the content. Uh, so, kind of bit of news. Uh, just of late, I said how we were uh, moving into new offices, and basically, in, on the screen, uh, you can see that's where we are. Uh, particularly up here, start starting uh, to the left, uh, left to it, so to speak. So yeah, that uh, just thought I'd quickly show. Uh, need Oh. Hang on a second. Theory has just decided to kick into life, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's where Noyantis is now. Um, when we're fully settled, we'll have some kind of launch party or launch event or something like that. But we'll, we're getting there. We're more or less there now. So yes, I thought I'd just share that with you. That is awesome. Yeah, cool. Well, it's a, it's another step. It's all uh, it's all baby steps. But from from starting knocking a few templates out, sat on uh, sat on the sofa <laughs> with a laptop, to um, you know th uh, this now and hopefully taking on uh, uh, looking to take on another trainee soon and so on. So uh, yeah, you know it's a uh, it's all Excellent. steps in the right direction. Absolutely. So congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, that out of the way, questions, 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 questions. We've already got one off David. Um, so let me just have a look. The question seems very small, actually. I can only just see it. Uh, I'm going to start with other people's questions. Ah, okay, yeah. I know David's got a, a few. Uh, I think they are broad ranging, someone with port control uh, and so on. And if anybody who. Uh, uh, so last week's um, recording, actually, I've not uploaded it. Anyone who was present last week uh, will know that we did some uh, training on the report control. So I know we've got some questions on that, which is to be expected. And then we're going to hopefully try, unless it's questions, uh, you know, unless we run out of time, we'll start with some, uh, some uh, getting started on one of the other products um, as well. That's the idea. I will actually just ask one quick question. I need to, on one of the webinars, I included some data when I shouldn't have done. So I need to just edit that out. And the normal editor I use seems to be um, not quite playing ball. Does anybody have any recommendations for basically uh, just cutting a few seconds out of um, uh, a Windows Media video? I think I, I found something that's like a split thing. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll try and find it for you. It's, um, it, it's like a split and join thing. You know, you can kind of cut it and then put it back together. Well, that's what I was using. But for some yeah. reason, after I do the uh, the rejoin, uh, it's, I don't know, hypothetically, it's a two it's a two hour webinar and one hour 50 and I need to cut. Literally, I think it's about three or four seconds. But um, I, I go to cut it and anything post the join seems to ages to kick in and, and it doesn't really uh i don't know it's, it's screwing up really <laughs> i think mean, david's just said well, we're going to open david's mic anyway but uh david's just said he can help with that as well so um yeah <laughs> okay. any help would uh thing but if, if you've got a, an app or a, a recommendation please you know uh yeah shout up um all ideas great gratefully received <laughs> okie dokie so um david mic's open David Watson, this is, sorry, because we've got a couple of Davids online. Yeah, sorry, I've got background noise as well. Okay. <laughs> um, my son's a bit upset because I won't start his cartoons for him because <laughs> I've told him I'm busy on a weapon now. Oh, I oh, can't have that. No, Ensi can't be blaming for upsetting children. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be sorted in a few seconds. Sorry about this. Um, yeah, as regards to your video, Andy, I, I probably help you with that. I had to do something very similar for my wife on something she was doing just a few days ago. Um, and so I've got a couple of online tools that uh, can probably help you out a little bit with that. But I'll, I'll do that with you on uh, on Skype afterwards if you want. 
Ah, and, brilliant. Uh, I'll, I'll help you get to the end of whatever you need to do with that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. It's just I want to get them up uh, uploaded, but I prefer to uh, now because they're going on to um, YouTube. I want to make sure that they yeah. go in the right order because I don't want people okay. jumping around and so on and just make it easier. Uh, so yeah. that's why they've not been updated, uh, uploaded. So apologies uh, for people who are who are waiting. <laughs> so, okay. Um, well, we've got another question. Like I say, anybody wants to jump in. Please feel free to do so. But um, I know, David, you had um, a theory. So do you want to start on one of yours and then we'll watch the others coming in and we'll just basically keep jumping between them? OK, let me grab back to my question and see which one's probably the best place to start. Then. Um, some of the ones that I sent through to you, I did actually manage to uh, resolve for myself. Uh, I, I wanted to dynamically create some columns instead of using the template. And I figured out how to do that using the add column and create columns. Cool. Yeah, I'll, just, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll open that for you for the, for the uh, purpose of the recording so people get a, a clear understanding of what actually happens. So we can just yeah. go that one quick point and, you know, it might pick something up for, for yourself at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so... I'll just open it. While you're busy loading, let me let me sort of talk a little bit and explain something that I did that I think is quite helpful for people. Um, I actually created a, a report and put a single column on the report and then went back in and looked at the code that was generated by the template to see where it had done the uh, adding for that column and I was able to work out from that what I needed to do in my own code to, uh, to dynamically create them myself. Uh, which is a, definitely a, a good tip. And to be fair, sometimes I'll forget, you know, the, the sequence of doing things and, uh, and so on and so forth because you're working, you're switching products, as you know, as we all are. Um, yeah. So I use the template sometimes, get it to do what I want, and then, you know, if, I, if it needs to be classed up, class it up, and uh, or if it's just a, a one-off, you know, use the code accordingly. Uh, yeah. But the reason it was implemented in such a way rather than straightforward add column, which... Added, <clears throat> added a column was historically when the products first came out add column did just that they added a column there and then and repainted the report control accordingly but right. when we uh, added the ability to save and restore we had to have an ability for you to basically create a, a column structure if you will so that the internal queue got populated with what should be where <clears throat> yes. and then there was a, a method call of create columns, which basically um, does what it says on the tin. So you, we could, we, we could if we wanted to, uh, add, call that add column definition, um, yes. and that would really be a, a true representation of what it does. And then create columns is a method call which actually goes off and does the uh, does the work. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I know you've already found that out. Just thought I'd uh, mention it for for the re recording. So, yeah, if you wanted to create them on the fly, it would actually be two uh, two calls. But yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, to add column, or add column definition, truly, but add column and then create columns. Uh, but it does give you the ability to add several columns and then just hit it in one go and do the create columns. So it is a, yes. a little uh, a little faster yes. in respect. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, that, that was that was quite useful to me. And like I said, I, I put a single column on the template, then went and looked at what was generated. And I saw that in the uh, report control create columns, it did the report control add column. And then there was a parent create columns. Yes. And then and some other uh, little bits of setup for the columns and things like that. So I figured out from that that if I didn't put any column in, I could then duplicate th those things and just call report control create columns and that would call the parent co create columns for me and do everything the same sort of way it would yeah exactly yes. so that's okay. it might seem a bit you know why is he implemented it that way but it's um it's to give the flexibility for the uh, the save and restore to be able to you know efficiently work yes 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 i understand that um one thing that i did want to sort of ask about Related to sort of this, um, I've got a situation where I'm uh, creating columns dynamically and I'm going to be resizing the window. 
And so I want to delete the columns that are already there and the rows, and then effectively completely repopulate the report control again. Is the one single I, method called to, to clear everything out, or do I have to individually go through and do uh, delete all rows, delete all columns, no, things no, like that? There should be. I would have expected there to be. Um, it's not in there. But I'm sure it's... Um, I thought there might be a, a clear all. Clear filter, clear. <clears throat> you see, one of the things I've started doing in a lot of my templates now is a, a method call called clear all, which basically yes. does exactly what it says on the tin. So you can call that knowing, I ah, you see, we've got a delete all. Now the delete all will remove any grouping, mm -hmm. remove any blocks that you might have. It is a particular yeah. order it wants to go through. Footer rolls, head rolls, the roles themselves, any of the uh, inline filter objects, and the column definitions. And then, okay. obviously, with that, you might have uh, dependent buttons, a bit like the uh, Browse No Records button, and it wants to go and resync those because if you just deleted the roles, then buttons yeah. should then be become disabled because there's no action to be taken. So, okay, yeah. So, yeah, uh, the, the delete all. Uh, in the future, as I say, on the uh, on the other products that I'm working on, I started using a, 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 a method called, called clear all, which I call internally during the init. So I know that it does everything I need it to and so on. And it will be a public um, method that you'll be able to call yourself uh, and, and, and so on. So yes. Report control happens to have one called delete all. Put your code on that for now, but um, so, so but sure the clear all will filter itself into all of the products as well. Okay, that's great. Thanks so for that, Andy. For a yeah. report control, it will be very similar to this. For a property grid, it will clear the property grid, and uh, I suppose the you know, task panel would do the options and so on and so forth. So it's one common bit like with all of these, you get the, uh, the similar type. Um, uh, methods. I'm trying to standardise. You 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 won't you won't always get that, but I'm trying to standardise as much as possible. So when you've learnt one product, you've kind of learnt the basics of the next and the next and so on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, <clears throat> so yep, yeah, that's that's two questions. That's good. Uh, delete all will definitely help in that scenario for you to dynamically delete, uh, and you've got a refresh option on there should you want to force it through. Uh, with, with the yes. delete all, I probably would recommend saying yes to that, a true to that. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let me just look at my list here. What's... If, if I'm adding things manually to a report control, should I be starting to number the rows at, at zero or at one? Oh, uh, entirely up to yourself. As long as it's got a unique, um, a unique value to get to that row, the template is happy. Okay. Because okay. sorting, sorting will be done by the report control itself, um, mm -hmm. so you don't really have to worry about that because it'll be whatever the user wants to do if you've given them the ability, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the, the the main key, the only key really, is uniqueness. If you say you want to go and change a particular property on row seven thousand two hundred. In, then it will do it on 7200 or ABC123, it will do it on ABC123. It just likes uniqueness, that's all. Okay, all right. Okay, that's all those. Um, I was trying to click on a row and using row selectors. And when I, so I can detect a click on it, but I can't detect any further clicks on that row and I've selected another control okay is let's... there any way i can sort of detect a, a click on a particular row or something like that yep let's just do it going to no not our v drive our n drive webinars today and let's bring the report control example in
So we'll use the example application and what this will do, uh, we'll just qu quickly compile it up. Now, when you click on a role, it's the, uh, is it role accepted, did you say? Role selected, I think oh, I used. Select. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, double click is role accepted. Single click is yes, yes, selected, I, yes. That's it, yes. Yep. yes I, I, I figured those out. Um, so. That, that led me to, to, to asking John about something about his ultimate debug, but that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can see here, selected, and this is just uh, the demo app, which just uh, emulates what's going on here. So if we do that, we can see it's there. Double click there, but if I single click now, no, it's not selecting it um, again. That's 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 a problem, correct? If you go off and go back again, of course it is. Yes, that's exactly the, the issue. I was trying to to find a way to make sure that if they clicked on it, then I, I knew that they'd done it. Right. Okay. Well, that is the default behaviour of the um, the report control. I'm just looking for the simple. Can't find it. Be a second. There you go, simple. Now, on the extension, because that's the default uh, yes. option, I think it is on the rows. Hmm. There you go. Trigger row selection when reselecting a row. Ah, perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for, yes. So, now that, like I say, the reason. Uh, all of this is event, event driven from the ActiveX control. So if that tells us something, I tell you something, and, and so on and so forth. But, yes. of course, that's not very good. It's not compatible with the Clarion way of doing things. And, of course, these, we're trying to make bridge, bridge that gap. So what that will do is if I go there, of course, I'm on 9, double click, I'm on 9, single click, I'm back on 9. Double, single, double, single. Oops. Bit trigger habit, sorry, single. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that's the one. So let's just quickly go back onto it again. So it's onto the extension, onto the options, row, and it's trigger row selected when reselecting a row. Yeah, perfect. So you're not the first to ask that, uh, hence why it's in there. <laughs> okay, that's great. I'm nearly finished now. <laughs> Two it's more okay. questions. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, nobody else. But again, as always, anybody just you know jump in. <laughs> um, right. Uh, you mentioned list sync row um, for setting values as I'm loading from a queue. I would have sorry. See, I would have said I meant sync roles. I think I did it actually on my. Uh, you, you asked a question regarding the best place, and I think it. I was actually on my phone at the time. Yes, you were. Uh, you were. So yes. But yes, basically, if we have a look at. In fact, let's go into the class definition. Sync row. That is singular. The one you'll want is just there with the sync roles, and that will do. Unless you want, of course, to sync just one row. Maybe you come back from an update form. Um, but, um, yes. Sorry, it's maybe me. Maybe I, maybe I meant sync rows. I, I think I meant sync rows as well, actually. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't. Let me just have a look here. A Obviously, all these ones, which are list uh, underscore, they're all related to some kind of list enhancer. So these being a, a manually, co manually coded list enhancer. Or sorry, yes. not manual code, the you know a standard list um, enhancer, or the the browse enhancer, which is still a Clarion list control. So there's all of those are related to each other to do with the list. As you can see, these ones are related to the inline search and the inline filter, and so on and so forth. So a tiny bit of grouping going on for the methods. Right. Okay. Now I understand why I'm getting mixed up. Then. Because when I was going through the embed edit, looking for an embed point for list sync rows. I can't find one, but I only find list sync row singular. Right, so basically, let's go to one of our enhancers. Um, any will do, really. Um, 
So basically, as you just said, I should imagine the only derivable one would be sync row. And that is giving you this uh, equates to all these for the direction. Is it going from the list or to the list? You know, which which, which side has been updated, the record or the report control itself? You know, that, that type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's giving you a hook point before basically it, it's, it's a bit like a um, bit like a in the secu record of a browse if you will before the parent call that's giving you the whole yeah, point that's, that's exactly what i'm after yes yes yeah so that that will be a, a place to do it okay oh, got to start toggle <laughs> and if i'm doing something in there what what am i actually actually will i there do a um set raw cell Value and set raw cell caption. Oh, okay. All right, now you now you're testing me. Let's have a quick look. It's basically to do exactly what you what you're saying. Um, it's effectively like taking a queue record, and I want to do some manipulating on the on on what's going to be displayed on the cell. So maybe I want to uh, set up a piece of XAML there or something like that, and put it into the caption. Yeah. So you uh, as it's being loaded from the queue. Yeah, so you could do that um, basically for the row, and it'll pass you what yeah. row is currently working on and yes. uh, the direction. So you've got a couple of equates. Uh, one of one equates is sync from Q, and one is sync to Q. Uh, okay. NYS report control underscore, that is. But now that I'm thinking this through, that. You probably want allow to, me to do things like that. I, I, I really probably shouldn't be even using the list enhancer if I want to get it, putting some XAML or something in, should I? Uh, no, you can. We did this. Um, I, I, I know you did, did the for, uh, format that did. No, no, no. We did it for... Uh, oh. Um, oh, thank you. Her name's completely... Go on, John. Um, Lisa? Lisa. Yeah. Oh, my days. Lisa, if she'll slap me at CIDC when she sees me for that. Completely forgot her name. But uh, yes, I, remember, I remember there's a webinar about what you did for her. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was to do with thing. that. We, we needed to manipulate on a on a, an enhancer. I think it was a, a browser enhancer. We needed to right. manipulate uh, the content. So we used XAML because she wanted, I think, oh, yeah, it might be XAML. Let's just take a quick yes, look. Yes, it was. I remember, I, remember, I remember I saw a little bit of that webinar. I've, I've got it downloaded and I was watching a little bit of that. And yes, it was like a multi-raw multi text. That's right. So Yes, I remember I remember you using XAML on that, yes. Yes, that's definitely the one. I'll just see. Okay, I'll, I'll look a bit further into that one then. Well, it might be. It won't be on this. It'd be on one of the enhancers. Just thought this might have uh, had it in for us, uh, but I, I forget which webinar it was, so I'm just jumping into a, a couple of the older ones. There's definitely the recording, and that has, that has been updated uh, and made available. It's just trying to find Lisa's... Um... No. I know I downloaded that one. <laughs> So, but that had uh, the example, and we probably did it in that embed point, to be fair. Ah, yes, 27th of February, Andy. Ah, I'm um, just, I'd have got to it in three, uh, in three uh, things at time, so let's have a quick look. So maybe it was on one of these. Do we know what, uh, where we actually put it? I don't know. I haven't got the webinar running or anything like that, but I know it's on the February the twenty seventh webinar. Okay. Then, then what we will do, just for the again for this recording, we'll just open up that one and take a quick look. And in modified order. Could have been either of these. No.
No, not to not find. But well, basically, it would be that kind of embed point uh, yeah. where you would do it. Uh, it'd be ideal if we could find it today, wouldn't it? Definitely the twenty seventh, because none of the none of those were modified on the twenty seventh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 27th of February. We took a look at Lisa's app and why rows were displaying at a certain height. Led to review of variable row height setting and side. Oh, maybe you didn't actually fix it in that one or something like that. But it's you, we were definitely talking about Lisa's app in that one. Okay, might just quickly open the uh, the next one. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything on this. Okay, well, we don't want to, uh, I'll, I'll just open the next one very quickly, and if we don't find it, then I'll, I'll, I'll have a look uh, privately offline. Off off so, it's like it could have been two weeks afterwards. Let's have a quick look. Hmm. No. Okay. Um, well, no, I'll, well, I'll have a look through that webinar yeah. and do that and figure out what I needed for that. Um, I actually did the, what I needed to do in a completely different way, anyhow. I did it in a completely manual uh, report control. We might have actually done it live on a uh, on a screen rather than uh, on Earth. Of course. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I remember seeing the, the XAML code. Um, on the webinar, uh, so so I know it was definitely there. But uh... of course, you have just made me think. What about the one with XAML? Didn't put it in there. No, no, we didn't. Okay, um, that could cover what you what you're trying to achieve there. Yeah, basically, you would be able to put it in there. I'd put it after the parent call, have the XAML yes. turned on. And yeah. then set the XAML for that particular row and cell, uh, sorry, row and column. So ultimately, get into the cell and setting the yes. content at that point. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Well, I've got one final question. I think. Uh, let me just check that I've gone through everything. Yes, that's all my things. Right, the last one I've got is, and this is probably quite a complicated one. Is there any way to get a Clarion image resource uh, as the source in XAML? So in other words, if I've loaded a bitmap onto a Clarion control, is there any way to use that as the source in XAML rather than be loading a, a file from disk? Mm. No, uh, the default. I did. I did some no. Google stuff, and and I found there's something to do with bindings, and there's a way I can get a um a, a base sixty four encoded string into it. Yeah, and I, some could. mention of doing what I'm looking to do, but it was all in uh, Visual Studio, and I didn't understand what they were doing. I think maybe they were looking for a, a handle to a to an image resource, an image stream. Well, basically, I'm just having a quick look, not mark up. Um, one be a second, just let me find the code that I'm thinking of. Come on. So. Okay. Yep, so just looking at that. So we're looking at something like report control icons. Mm -hmm. Icons, and we want the report control icon collection. So the, it, this is the image manager for the report control. Right. 
Then you've got now UB load bitmap, but that is from a yeah bitmap file. Mm -hmm. No, load image from resource. That's going to be. Um, let's have a quick look. An icon to the. Yeah. Ah, do you know what? I don't think I think that's um, just getting the command, but I don't. I think that is. Uh, Sorry, let me just mute myself for a sec. No pops. I'll just take a quick look at this. Gone. Um, Well, basically, just look in there, resource, specify there. Yeah. No, I'm not quite, I'm not convinced that's the, uh, that's the one for you, to be fair. Okay. I dare say you can do it, but it's not covered at the moment by the templates and all that. Uh, yeah. To another okay. yeah yeah so it is, it's not uh, it's not covered at the moment okay if i explain to you what i'm trying to do maybe you might suggest something else than okay yeah um, i've got a, a load of images i'm talking about a lot of images thousands and doing a search through them and they're going to be all stored either in blobs or possibly in memo files as data as base 64 images and so as I'm searching through the files to determine which ones to display I thought it was easier just to be loading the image from the file there rather than having to then go for each image and load it from a disk file plus I don't also want the users to actually see the actual Raw images, images yeah. yes, the, the raw images. I, I, don't, I don't want to directly full of all these images. Um, I, I need to keep those sort of hidden from the user, and that, that's why I'm trying to sort of do this. Hmm. Then this is probably going to be our our, our our best option, but where we start, I've got to admit, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. If they would have to do some uh, some digging to know uh, just exactly uh, what you know what tools they have built in to help us. Uh, yeah. cause I'm just looking down our the common code code here. Uh, we've got add icon. We've got load icon. We can see that. It's, I'm I'm doing a, a, a an API call to get it from the compiled in resource. That's no problem. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just using their standard add icon, load icon, or load from file, that type of thing. Yes. Yes, and, and bear in mind as well, this is, um, I'm wondering if this actually in the XAML itself. So effectively, I've got a, a, I've got a grid um, in the in the XAML. And it's an image inside that grid in the XAML. That's that's what I'm trying to to, to load into, not into the report control yeah. natively. It, it's into the XAML. Yeah. So actually, you're not going to be going via this anyway. The the question there is um, not really related to the report control. It's really related to XAML and the capabilities of I, that. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I found something via Google about um, images and image source and binding things to the image source, and that's where I found this. And I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know enough about that side of things to understand exactly what bits I, I need to get out of Clarion to to pass into that. No, I'm just having a look. Mind you, I don't know if this does any. This is a Kazamel. I've used it for basic Xaml. Yes, I was using it over the weekend, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, anything to do with uh, that's got a 3D logo, but I think they they physically build it. 
Cannot create viewport. That's a good start. Yeah, the, but they they're just built in it. That's not. Yeah, anything. they're probably just loading a, a a file from the disk to do that. Yeah. Or oh, all right, see what you mean. Yeah, they're, they're, build, they're building it like a like a graphics vector. Yeah, exactly. Um. Oh, we did. No, no. I mean, and, and I, from memory, I don't think this is um, it, it includes an example of that neither. So you'd have to have a look more online and then see if it's compatible with the Codejox um, implementation of XAML, because the majority of it's supported, but not strictly all of it. Dave Bratovich is definitely your man to advise on, on what is supported and what's not. Um, he's okay. done cracky stuff on that. I'll reach out to him with him. Okay. Yeah, he's he's light years ahead of, the, ahead of any of us uh, for XAML. Okay. All right, I'll reach out to him and ask if he's got anything related to this to help me then. Well, I know he sent me... Um, let's just see if I can see. He won't mind me, uh, Fingy. Let me just see if I can find uh, one of the examples he sent me through not long ago. Where was the last one he sent me? What's quite impressive, it might be the type of thing you're looking for, you see, that's why I'm I'm, I'm looking to uh, find it. So, yeah, that's uh, the screencast. Okay, so this is the report control, what he's built. Um, Using XAML, so you can see the report control, and he, uh, he you know, he's taking control of it and moving it left and right, and so on and so forth. No. Yes, I, I saw that he sent that through to me last week as well. Yeah, and I was asking some questions and that, and uh, I actually got some quite good stuff going in XAML, um, but it, it, it's just needing to read from the disk that's that's going to slow the, it down. The main issue for me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Roberto's. Oh, I was going to say, Roberto, just saw your hand up. Uh, yeah, sorry, Roberto, how are you doing? I, I can ask my little brother, see, you know, because he works in WPF all the time. So oh, yes, of course. A way to, to do inline, uh, you know, bitmap images inside the XAML. I'm sure there probably is. You just need to code it right, you know, or convert it so that it's, it's readable. But, <laughs> here's a big but. Uh, I'm not sure that if he does have a solution that'll work with a Kojak yeah. uh, XAML implementation, that's the always the biggie there. Right. I, I did find some stuff, Roberto, online that uh, seems to indicate it's possible to do it in Visual Studio. Um, but yeah. I, I had no idea how to convert that across to, to Clarion. To well, get if, it you, to, if to you already there. have the XAML code, just try it in the in the XAML. Um, the no, it, it calls a data converter. Oh, and the data so converter bit is code. in. Yeah. No, yeah. I was. Yeah, if you can find a, just a XAML example that actually does it, you has the inline um, base sixty four or however you want to put the the image in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably be easier to test that way. Um, Otherwise, you know, all I have seen in XAML is just the ex external files, you know, when, when it loads them up, just it has the path name and the name of the file and so on. Yes, yes I've, I've got something up. working doing that way, but the problem is to do it that way, I've got to leave all the, all the images in a folder somewhere on the right. user's computer and that gives them straight away access to all those images exactly. and I, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Right. Just had a quick look on here. There's something on the. Um, don't know if that helps. I don't think we're quite seeing the full thing, but basically, you see they've got the data coming into um, basically a binary array, isn't it? Um, so they're reading it base 64. But I don't think this is the question is 
uh, uh, yes, I was looking at this uh, this particular question. Yes, that that exact one. Yeah. Yes, that's where I was finding this out that we would do it through Base sixty four, but it needs yes, to use that's, that's a, a bit of Visual C Studio. To, to yeah, that that's not uh, XAML code. No. No, no. But you see, if you just stop, and just yes, go back I up know. again. Yep. Um, you see where it is something about memory stream. Missed where you you've gone down oh, a little sorry, from yeah. where it was. Memory uh, stream there, yeah. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's something to do with that. Now I thought, was there any sort of way of doing something very similar to this um, in Clarion, and would the memory stream really map to a handle to an image control or something like that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I told you it was going to be a complicated one. This one. There was a piece below that talk, it said the XAML window or something like that. What kind of uh -huh. code does that have? There, window dot XAML, and um, they've got the image converter. Yeah. yeah, you see how it's doing binding base sixty four image data. Yeah. yeah. So that's internal of the that 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 is probably not going to be compatible with the code jock stuff okay. at all, unless right. you can somehow instead of bind it, uh, put the base sixty four data in there, kind of like the one above that says base sixty four image data there. You copy yes. that and paste it down below where it says image source, and yes. see if that works. Okay, I can try that. Um, I can use string theory to convert the images to right to base yeah, 64. Store them, store them in a memo yeah. file or something like that, and uh, and load load them out of that. Yeah, because I was yeah. just having a quick look uh, here for um, so in XAML you you have got like I said we're, we're firing the dark a little here, but in XAML you've got the image source. So I'd I'd have a look at what the actual that looks like. It's the same thing, doesn't it? Um, but I'd, I'd have a look at. Um, what options you've got for image source and can it just be basically the raw data or a handle to the raw data that type of thing an address yeah the problem is i don't understand those things enough to to, to know that i'm finding the right thing andy um mm, just image source i'd ask dave finding image mm -hmm. source through property They all keep see, coming back to this bitmap image, don't they? Yeah. So you've got the image source and it's coming there, ending it, and then the icon is just straightforward. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll talk no. to Dave a bit and see if we can find something out from him. Yeah. No, sorry, I mean, he's. If it's doable, he's like a. Uh, you know, he likes a challenge. So it's doable. Yeah. Um, he's your well, man, it's the last piece in my puzzle that I need to get working. I've got uh, dynamic controls, loading the image into like little thumbnails and displaying them across the screen and that, um, and formatting them all in XAML. But managing to do like the the images from a file is the the part that's defeated me so far. Okay, okay. The other, well, I guess, would be to convert your bitmap images to XAML. And then put that in there. Um, you might be able to find some kind of a DLL or executable file that will convert the the I, input. I can convert the images to XAML. Right, and then just paste the XAML code into that into your text block or whatever you're using or your grid. Okay, I didn't know how to do that. Okay, so so you're saying I convert a JPEG into some into form XAML. of XAML code. Yes, it, it's, usually it's humongous. Yes. But sometimes they they encapsulate the the bitmap in the XAML code, and yeah. also in in some kind of base sixty four format or something like that. It does it, and it should work as long as they're smaller images. I guess if they're really humongous. Yeah. Images, it's probably really just no. Um, for this particular thing, it's just going to display thumbnails. The ones I was testing with were, I think, 300 by 255, and that's going to be about the right, the, the sort of size. Mm -hmm. um, it might might work. I don't know. It's just a, 
I guess I mean, there I'm are... sure what, what it looks like if, if you want you can see what sort of size of images I'm I'm talking about yeah there are uh, converters there yeah. are programs that are also save in XAML format um, I've tried them and sometimes yes. I get good results with the code jock um, yeah. you know and sometimes they it won't read them at all <laughs> okay so you know I guess it's a Try and see if it works for you. Oh, just okay. a quick one. It's something to investigate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm tasked with converting about 20 bitmap images to a workable XAML file, complete with all the path statements, so on and so forth. So they're saying converting image to XAML. I don't mind taking a quick look at that. We digress a little, but let's just quickly see if we can help on that. Uh, not sure you're gonna get. You're not gonna be able to do this on the fly, though. Right down below, or oh, you just skipped over it. But look at below. It's called Inkscape. That's a program that uh, load up a bitmap. Yes, I've, I've got in Inkscape. XAML. Okay, you can save that in XAML. Yes, uh, it's, so it's you a free program. To, right, you might be able I don't to know that encapsulate that. Encapsulate or not. Uh -huh, encapsulate that ex that file export into your grid or your text block or whatever you're using mm -hmm. and and see if it works for you yeah yeah it's a lot of files to convert by hand in inkscape because Inkscape right, would, right. Be, would be manual yeah, Although, sure i don't know maybe there's a way of uh, automating it i'll see yeah okay well it, you give me something to think about anyhow mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think you, the, the I, I definitely progress the option where you are reading it into base 64 or, or whatever and taking it from yeah. there. I think that might be because okay. uh, then you're not having to uh, shell out to another third party product and rely on the capabilities of that product and so on and so forth. Yes. So yes. I think you might. Well, that's that's what that. I'm trying to do. I want to just uh, be reliant on myself and obviously the code jock stuff for, yeah. for this because. Uh, Quite honestly, what I did with this, I, I, I can't imagine how I would have done it in standard Clarion. But, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's any, any others in the in the code jot library itself. Let's have a quick look. Read image, or maybe bitmap. Yeah, that might be a image list. Oh no, no that's a calendar one. Trans data from a data object. Okay. Syntax edit. So quite a few of them had the uh, let's get data. Um, no, no. Sorry, David. Um, happy to put uh, take a, another look, but it's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a toughie. I think I speak to Dave Bratovich first. See if he knows what the load options are, and uh, it'll be a hell of a lot easier to try and read it in into one particular format than it will be to um, you know. Uh, uh, try and like say shell out or, or whatever and so on and so forth yeah that's fine Andy thanks um, it's, it's a bit of a strange one and yeah. not, for, not for most people but uh, thanks for trying to help no 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 problem um, yeah I but think that's the end of my questions <laughs> okay okay well the, the thing you'll be limited about uh, oh hang on Dave has just jumped on so um I guess the other. <laughs> David, sorry, David just uh, come online, and uh, but I think it was a, a thing for John, a message for John. So uh, the other thing you can do is create temporary files uh, if you got your images in. Yeah, I, I was thinking of that. Um, you will have to slow down though because of the. Why? Well, one of the things I did consider doing. 
How many yeah. files are you thinking of doing on a single XAML screen? Or well, it could potentially return a thousand items in a search. Okay. Yeah, that's a little too much, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. So m most times you probably won't. Most times you're probably talking somewhere between 20 and 50, something like that. Um, but it could potentially be anything up to a thousand. Actually, when I think about it, occasionally it could be even more than that. <laughs> I, th I think if it got more than that, and it, it would probably just crash the program completely. Uh, mm. I think I'd have to put some sort of limit in to say never return more than a certain number of results anyhow. Mm -hmm. what? I was just thinking whether, again, using their built-in libraries, uh, whether that would uh, help. But then again, you're going to load it from the resource, and that resource is going to be Clary incompatible and so on, and chance it's not. Yeah, I think XAML is going to be your best route, as in the, the, the data source, of the image source. That's going to be your best yes. route, personally. Yes. Yes, I, I didn't realize that you could convert uh, images to, to XAML. Um, so if I can find a way to do that, then that's probably, if I, actually that's probably an even better solution because the store even, 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 if, even if the user's got all of the, the things. Yes, yes. Ah, okay, because I thought it was going to be the user was going to control the actual images. No, 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 they're just, just pictures, basically. Just standard JPEGs. Okay. Just but obviously, the, I, I was planning on making thumbnail images of them and storing them either in blobs or as base64 in a memo file, in a, in a memo inside a TPS file, um, and reading them from there. Right. The, the, the main idea is basically to hide the images away from the user, so that they can't just look at the images and uh, yeah, manipulate them. Use the, yes, manipulate them, use the thumbnails for their purposes, and whatever. Yeah. No, no, I understand. I would, like I say, I speak to Dave and see about the the source thing first. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, any any other questions? We had one actually just a second ago. Um, where was it? It's Pete. Uh, unfortunately, Pete can't attend today. Possible to add a little example how to use the report control with data from a table to the training gap you made last week. Uh, data from a table. Well, all of the, I think, the training gap last week. Let's just open last week's app. Oh, I thought we did actually... Um, we did cover that last week. Let me just bring up last week's webinar. Yes, I'm sure you covered that last week, Andy. Yeah. Let me just open last week's. Uh, Pete might have uh, might have missed it. Um, Maybe it's just because he hasn't had a chance to review the Yeah, and I haven't uploaded webinar. it because of the thing, so... But, um, yep, the training gap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sent it across, uh, so I will get them update, uh, uploaded um, ASAP. But we did, uh, we did um, from a data point of view, so he said, is it possible to add a little example how to do a port control with data from a table? So maybe, maybe uh, he does want to do a manual one, but read the data himself. That's quite possible, because we just used it as quite static data. So, because the enhancer, all you would literally do on the enhancer is just add the extension. So, for those who missed last week's, we did an example application where we, we covered manually uh, getting data, sorry, different ways of getting data into the report control, all excluding the uh, data binding. Uh, the browse enhancer, there's no code to it. You just select your browse and then add an extension and you add the browse enhancer. So Pete is asking if we can um, use the report control with data from a table to the training gap. So he must mean a, a manually loaded one. So it'd be very similar to this manually loaded uh, report control. So we painted it on the screen 
and I think it was in the probably in the init complete knowing me in the embed point init complete we just went through and manually added one two and uh, basically did it three ways row one where we added a row and set the individual cells cells row two did it that way row three cleared a data uh, group added the row but then pass the group in as the actual source of the data. So that was another way. If we wanted to do that from a table, it would be, um, and we can just quickly cover this. Can't see, the, there we go. <laughs> um, manual um, with table that will do I could have looked at that so we'll take a base one of what we did for the manual we'll call it with table We'll take our manual load and we'll just get rid of our um, that particular data and we'll replace it with something from a table. So in other tables, let's just call uh, car makes as good as any. I think on the car makes we have um, a code and name. So we'll just have two, two columns. So we'll call this column code with column name. So that gives us our column definition. We've got no embeds except for the normal save and restore. A quick compile of what we've got so far, and we should just end up with Uh, manual with table we've got two columns ready to go we just want to put the data in that now so it's going to be a very very simple job um, I'll do it in because I'm not sure you ABC or so I'll just do it in the the old um, equivalent of legacy we'll go through in name order as I say it doesn't really matter that we go through no actually I'll, I'll, I will load in code order because it'll just bug me uh, set key key, we want to clear first, obviously. So we'll next on the car mix, um, this is very rough and ready, but you get the idea. And then all we're going to do is, uh, we'll, We'll do it a couple of. We'll, we'll demonstrate in the uh, in the normal way. You, you, we know how we can do it via a group or via the the actual manual calls. So we'll just go with this and we'll say add a row, and the row can got to be unique. So it might as well be the unique field out of the table because that's as good as any. We want to go and set on that row. So there's its ID. We want to do the code column and the value we're going to set it to is the code and we'll just repeat that for the name so we've got a name column again the idea of the cut the idea of the row is going to be the code because that's what we added it as and that i'll do a clip And that's it really we will um I would, the reason i paused there was i just wanted to see i think in this example we've got our setting to be 
not adding the row on the fly and then we'll do our own populate afterwards but if you remember we have got a setting which can control that behavior so it's in the init complete we'll compile that and if we do manual with table there's our records from the uh, from the table And if you wanted to, because uh, basically what we're doing here is it is a manually loaded uh, report control, but you just happen to be taking the data from a uh, from a, a TPS or a SQL or a SQL query or, or whatever. Uh, but we're taking that data from there. So basically, that's that's that. And if you wanted to put an update button on and call a form, it would be along the lines of um, oh, call the form would just basically be emulating but if we were to emulate an update button I, I thought you created the ah. crud um, buttons there I just gonna say um, <laughs> come on <laughs> Well, what I want to do on that actually is uh, it's not on the update, but we use um, because it's not going to an update a record button. So I think of a browse no records. So I would use that after all that work I just did. But okay, um, I'll call it well change. I suppose change. Change the ICO and I'll just message out so we can see what, what, what that will do. But basically, uh, message selected row. Oh, we won't have a problem, of course, it'd be a uh, report control get. So Andy, you don't have the cred buttons yet? Not in this, not the one what I'm on here. They're in a, a, a basically a, a rough and ready template. Because they get, they get developed separate, then they get brought into this. Otherwise, the amount of compile errors I'd get while we're trying to do webinars would be a, a little embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, report control one. Okay. Uh, get selected row ID. And just to, well, well, we'll demonstrate this and I will just mention one thing you can do there. So, yes, basically. That would go and get you 12, of course. That should get you 14. And if this didn't have any columns in there, then basically um, that button would disable because it's a brow it, the equivalent of a browser no records button. So uh, one quick thing, which I don't know if anyone noticed there, we'll cover it because it's part of training, is as I went to get selected row ID, of course, you'd expect it to get you just the uh, selected row. What it can do is it can take a parameter and that is the selection. And that relates to, if I just open the example application, and have we got selection somewhere? Okay, so if I highlight that, and I say get selected rows, one row is selected and it's telling me which one it is. But if I was to, and that is what, um, oh, basically, if I look at them as batches, so I select that one, that one and that one, that one and that one, then basically get selected will get the last if you didn't give it a parameter. If you give it a parameter of basically it's like which, which batch of selections, that would give you just a one, that would give you 
the second, that will give you the third, and so on. So you can actually go through and have a look at what was selected. This is just getting the lot back. So it's just a bit more, you know, bit of info you can uh, you can do with the uh, report control. Because of course, all selections not, aren't necessarily um, aren't, aren't necessarily uh, sequential, of course. Okay. Um, that, that's just with get selected row, Andy. You get, selected, call that. get selected row ID. So if we take a quick look in the class, get selected row ID. So it's a selection. So basically, um, selected the actual property inside of the class, selected rows uh, can go through. But as I say, they will go in. Um, See here now. Is that in the batches? Such a... da, 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 da. Right, so it's got some, that's fine. Oh, sorry, no, that, yes, yeah, so it's not batches. It'll be actual the the number itself. So let's clear all these. Oh, <laughs> let's just do one. So I'm going to set row uh, select row one. Oh, it's zero based. Okay. So zero and one. That'll be four. Oh, it's it's in whatever order they were loaded in, of course. So yeah, I'm making a a pig theory of this answer. But basically, um. Yeah, selected roles. The selected roles, I'm sure, comes back and gives you, like say, the, the, the batches. So you, you're going to go through and then get them in, in this order. It's zero base as, as well. Okay, but at least you can get them and yeah. you've got some way of processing them. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, get selected roles. And you will need the get selected role count as well. So you could be, there you go, you can see it there. So you okay. get selected row count, it'll just tell you how many have been selected. And then if it said there's 20, you could say, okay, give me the 19th one out of it, give me the 17th one out of it, and so on and so forth. Okay, or just loop through them and oh, get them all and process them. them. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, if you wanted a much faster way, you wouldn't do that. The much faster way is just work on the selected queue. At any one time, that queue gets populated. So if I select that and hold down and that and that, that queue is automatically populated and that's queryable for yourself at any time. So if you look within the class, you have, no, not that one. You have a queue called selection queue. So report control dot selection queue and that is always in sync. So as you go around here, it will update itself. That's a standard Clarion list emulating what is in the selection queue at any time. Oh, that's brilliant. That's excellent to know. So yes, yeah, if we look at that. That will prove very useful, yes. We have a look at that selection queue. There you go, selections. So that's a list selections, and I should imagine I'm doing something with the queue, LV selection queue. Um, where's that getting set? Must be within the report control itself. Can't actually see where it's being selected, uh, where it's being set. A while since I've done this. Uh... Hmm. This is the right example, isn't it? Okay. Um, well, it does. It, it, it keeps it up to date. I can't actually remember how it does it, but uh, but it is available to you there. 
That's great. That's, that's a good way of doing that. I can think of another, another piece of what I'm going to be building, but that's going to be very, very helpful for. It's actually bugging me where, uh, how it's getting populated, if you want the truth. That's selection queue, LV selection queue, and you can see it's on the screen, but it's not actually getting populated. But we know it does, of course. And it's not by magic. <laughs> But inside of that's really bugging me. But yes, the selection queue is 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 that one there. Report control selection queue. So if we have a look inside the class. Oh. That's the initialization of it. Um I think roles. Because it works with the browse enhancers as well, of course, obviously. I think that was sync selections. Yeah, so basically, this is what it'll do. So it goes through, and as you, it has a look at that, uh, the the particular selection status of a record, and it will go through and add and delete accordingly, and so on and so forth. So that's always kept into sync. I'm not, I'm not sure how that example is actually doing its magic, but uh, but it is. Um, I have to refresh myself. I have to remind myself. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Uh, we've got a little under 20 minutes left. Um, or shall we start on some training uh, on another one of the one of the other products? You handled all my questions very well, Andy. Thanks very much. So. No problem. Okay, well, I uh, can't see any questions coming in. So just like we did with the, um, let's just cover the basics of um, probably go with one of the easy ones. So we've had report control, and we'll go to something like the property grid. Quite powerful. You know what? I was hoping you were going to say that, Andy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I didn't know. Uh, I'm good, and I'm not that good. Um, no, I was really hoping that was what you were going to choose, but I wasn't going to influence things. But uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, no problem. So I think we'll start just by looking, because there is... We're short on time, and I know basically I go on the, the more popular. What we'll do is we'll go with easy ones, although report control definitely wasn't one of the easy ones. Um, but um, and we'll work our way up to the likes of the calendar, which is really, really powerful, um, much more data orientated, as you would imagine, because uh, a command bar is once it's once it's kind of built, you're not really apart from a few user options, it's kind of static task panels very similar shortcut bars very similar property grids they can involve a bit of data so it's probably worth moving to that one uh, to, to that one next but we'll cover just the example uh, today and we'll uh, see what we can uh, cover on that and then we'll start in earnest next week uh, with the actual um, main settings and creating our own example of that So, we've got our, let's bring it up and we'll quickly compile. Property Grid is one of them products where I think is, is really, um, really versatile. Ah, I've well, we already got a question on a Property Grid. Hi, how can I, uh, how can I hide a field in the Property Grid? That's Alejandro. Okay, we'll open up the mic, make sure I've got that right. Hi, Alejandro. Uh, is that just... Hello, Andrew. How, How you are doing? you doing? Yes, fine, thank you. you? Fine, fine. Uh, okay, did you read my question? Uh, it's uh, how can you hide, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, well, that's no problem. I'm trying to think of any of the examples, if we have the examples. We'll go through the, the, the basic structure and then we'll go to how we would say hide one um, so the structure sorry I meant to keep that open is you categorize the items so you have a category the item mm -hmm. and the type which ultimately gives you the, the 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 type of content and so on and it supports quite a lot of different types of content straight on strings where are we straightforward strings numbers 
numbers, but you can put a slider attribute on and spins and so on and so forth. We're not going to cover all the particular things. We just want to know the actual structure of it. You can put uh, the help down here. So basically we can see if you don't override it with anything, it just takes the actual caption of the item. But you can override that and give it much more meaningful data. And you can do a thing called verbs. So you've got your help, as you can see there. But you can also give, basically these are, I don't know why they're called verbs. Somebody might be able, be able to help me out on that. But they are essentially shortcuts, shortcut items. So we can say, clicking that will actually go off and choose a print setup or maybe a color selector, that type of thing. So you can set your property, uh, your property grid up to have those if you uh, require them. Uh, interaction wise, of course, you can tell when things have been edited. So you can, so you can see that if I was to say I want to know when the user has physically typed it, it will come back and tell me and so on. So you might want to do your own validation. To quickly answer your question, what we'll do, now we've got this, in this simple uh, item here, we'll go to that string and we will hide it under condition. Uh, so we'll go with a simple. Let's have a look at how we've got that data in there. Now this happens to be all manually coded and it's even manually coded in the template. So, which we, in reality, you, actually, do you know what you might do? I can think of scenarios where you would have a fixed set of items, uh, so you might as well define them in the template and just set the set the actual data element of them um, at runtime. I think, John, you use the uh, property grid, and I should imagine you use something similar to that, do you? Unless your items are all dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, a lot of mine are, are I kind of build on the fly. Yeah, well, I, I can see reasons, uh, you know, areas where you would have both. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover one in a minute, but this one is just is just static. But yep, we've got a property grid. Um, general, just like we did on the others, uh, appearance and so on, and we can cover this when we do the, the, the full-on training. We're going to go straight to the data source. We'll, we've defined it in the template, which we've got. And I know it happened to go in the items category. So within the items category, we've got the definition of the category itself, and then the items within there. And the one we want is this string item. So that's this ID. That's what we're working towards. So let's have a quick look on the, bring this up. We will put a button on the screen. I string. Actually, do you know what? We won't do that. We'll have it as a checkbox. So there's our hide string. I didn't, as they toggle that, we still got, yeah, we've got a string item. We want it to be uh, the uh, property grid dot, don't know what the class is called. <laughs> oh, it was just that, okay. So this should be um, set item visible is the thing I'm looking for. Yep, there it is. I'll bring this into view so you can see. Set item visible, you pass it an ID, and of course, whether it's visible or not. 
and of course there's others you know for all the particular items and get gets and sets as you would expect all of these properties which you set in the template of course can be changed at runtime so it's string item and we're going to set it to ah we want to inverse it don't we so it's set to hide then it'll be uh, false otherwise will to be true <laughs> oh so, so there's our we'll go down to our thing so there's your string and you can hide it and put it back so that's really what you what you have to really i tried to search but i never found <laughs> but i searched bad <laughs> um they should and it's not just for this uh, let's just have a quick look the names what you'll be looking for is they'll be set uh, this happens to be item, so it's set item uh, visible, and on the command bar it's a control, so it's set CTRL visible. Uh, I think the task panel, uh, I think that has items actually, so that'll be set item. But basically, you're looking for the likes of visible for the hide, so that'll be hide and show, and enabled. Yes. Is the set item enabled? Yeah, set item enabled, and that should be quite common throughout uh, a lot of the products. So if I just bring in the task panel, for example, it's a set item, set item enabled, and there should be a set item visible. And if yes. we, yep, and the same with the shortcut bar, and I'm gonna probably prove myself wrong here, because short, shortcut bar was probably our very, very first product. And, um, yeah, it's not there. <laughs> so that yes, I search something like high show and never uh, imagine a visible. <laughs> I yeah. forget. So, well, basically, it's because the code job properties are enabled and visible. So, you, I try and yeah. tie them in. If you're reading through, the idea is if you're reading through the code job help to see what the, the, the command is capable, the, the control is capable of, then I want the methods to be meaningful in that mindset. So, if you are looking at yes. The, the, the properties which they enabled, then hopefully you look for that in, in ours. It's not the same as Clarion, of course, because Clarion is usually prop hide and prop disable. So it's quite the opposite, but it's... No, it's, but in, if you see in your classes in Noyant is common, you have a sum for hide and show to... Ah, uh, yes, but that is for the overall control. Did you remember we was we do, working yeah. with this? You, you corrected it. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for this reason. But thank you. Yep, no thank problem. you very much. Andrew. No problem. Uh, before we dive into, well, we probably won't have time to dive into a lot of help today. Is there any quick questions we've got on the report control, and uh, which will gear, you know, the things? Or shall I just show some of the actual different ways you can get the data in there, and then we will cover them manually next week. I'd just be yep. interested in seeing how you get the data in there, Andy. Okay, well, there's a few ways. Uh, one is by the template, as you saw just a minute ago. Uh, we'll just go to any, it doesn't really matter. One is via a list control. It's manually, called, manually loaded, which means basically the template is not going to do anything. I'll just do it when I need it. So maybe it takes on the shape of the thing that you are clicking on. So if somebody clicks on one particular record, you need it to look like this. If they click on another record, you need it to look like so on. Uh, that, that, that type of uh, approach. So that's manually loaded and only you will know what shape it should take on because, um, because it's, you know, it's your, your app and so on. Uh, the list control cl clues in the name, so it can take the data from the list and the queue is uh, a, a pretty versatile method. In fact, if you have the scenario where you, let's say you had a browse of different types of records. So 
you've got products and some of them products might be batch tracked maybe they are drugs uh, medicines so on and so forth some might be serial number tracked which are like electronic items and you want to make sure that you've got the thing you have a serial number recorded and so on and some might just be uh, or some might be like shelf expiry dates so you, you need to show that in there so basically the shape of the property grid will change depending on the record they've selected well of course you can manually do that and that would work and you just call these add category delete add item delete so on and so forth so you've got all those but a better way i think of doing it would be via the queue and basically you have a queue you can populate the queue and we'll quickly look at the structure with basically how you want the property grid to look including the data contents and it will take on that shape uh, so that's that's what I use in my apps and it'll work for a lot of scenarios it's quite versatile and it saves you having to remember to add category add item set caption set caption you know uh, uh, set item caption so on and so forth so all you've got to do is just uh, write to a clarion queue and hey presto it'll keep itself in sync that in action here is just a quick demonstration I'm just regenerating the same type of data here but with different values so and it's fast and this just monitors for the clarion queue change so whenever the uh, queue contents change and clarion receives any kind of event so of course pressing a button is an event so as soon as it recognizes uh, the contents of the queue changing it will go and rebuild the, uh, the property grid itself that in action would be um, now, where's my icon? There it is. Is that mainly meant for when you're displaying data, Randy, rather than editing it? Because you, you're talking about taking the data from the queue. If the data is edited, where does it go back to? Or are you expecting us to have a separate manual process to take the data out of the property grid and put it back somewhere? Um, no, I think. Oh. We better check that next week but no you can have it where you you know you can do it where you can have it from a, a queue and it will write back to the uh the 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 table itself so it can be linked to the dictionary okay so i'm just trying to say a particular form here But I've got, to watch a, I've got someone's data hooked up at the moment, so I've just taken it off screen because I, I don't want um, someone's data. So just one second. <laughs> Sorry about this. Okay, that's more acceptable now. Okay, so I've got me in as a as person. Uh, it's not my real, real date of birth, so you don't try to steal my identity. <laughs> okay, um, so in this system, you I let them create uh, medical forms, well, questionnaires, really. So I'll have a, I think we've done it in the past where we could say, we'll create one here, and it'll be a questionnaire, oops, one. And we'll just ask a series of questions. Maybe um, name. You can give it default values. That's, uh, do you know what we will actually fill in? So name and um, football team. That type of thing. And uh, maybe prompt them for a date. So you can see that the shape is going to be dynamic of what I want to do. So date question and even uh, we'll ask for a numeric one as well. So I want it to be um, an integer. So int question. So it's questionnaire one. Okay, okay. Oh, and it's um, 
open as a medica medical questionnaire. So back to me, I'm going to do a new questionnaire. I'm going to bring in the shape of this. And you see the, the property grid now is built off the shape um, of that loader questionnaire. Now, the code wise for that is I'm using the Q approach. So the Q basically is uh, read the shape from a, a, a definitions table and populate the Q and hey presto, it's there. So if I was to go through and look at different ones, oh, that, was, that did load, sorry. You can see it uh, it will take, and all I'm doing there is just populating a Q and the, report, the property grid is changing dynamically uh, the content to match basically what is required. So that's one use. So I, I would suggest the old way of doing stuff where you would probably um, say, OK, I'll manually code it depending on which one of these they selected on. Now you don't need to do that. Now you can just go with the queue and let, Clary, let the property grid class recognize the change and build automatically. And you know that it will take on the shape and so on and so forth. And the, that, that particular queue in question, its definition is here. So just like you would if you were doing it by a template, you'd want to give it the ID, uh, sorry, the category, an ID, a name, and is it expanded by default or not? And then the item that, uh, of course, an item will still need to belong to a category. For the item, it would be um, the item ID and then the particular things for the name, a default value, if you want it to have a default value, the type, which of course are all our standard equates, uh, the description, which is basically the, uh, the the help bit underneath, so it doesn't have to match just the caption. It could be a more meaningful description, uh, the tool tip, and then various different properties you want it to have. So Boolean might be true or false, but you might actually store, if you tick it, you want to store 50, and if you don't untick it, you want to store zero. So you can override what the actual, all the default values are, and so on and so forth for all of those. And the clarion type, that is basically when you are, where you, when you do get it from a, a dictionary, then clarion, you might want to prompt it on the screen as a date, of course, but clarion will want, put, it want it in its own date format. So it will do the conversion for you when it's putting it back. Okay, that probably gives you a little bit to whet your appetite for this week. <laughs> and we'll actually cover um, creating uh, some uh, property grids using the different me methods uh, as we've uh, as we've mentioned uh, next week if that's okay I'll be looking forward to that one Andy <laughs> so, very interested in seeing that anyone got any ideas on or questions on the property grid um, John just out of interest then how do you load yours do you still do the uh, add category add item or do you use a queue approach uh, I Still use the ad, the ads. Yeah, right. I don't use the queue approach. It probably came up. I think the queue approach might not have been in when you first started using them. To be fair, might might have come in between uh, and so on. So, but just a, a tip there. You know, going for your next one, try the queue approach. Yeah. You know, I, I use it in, every time I use the property grid. Now I've got to admit, I I don't bother calling all the method calls. I always use the queue approach. It's just it's just easier. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> and you'll show us next week, Andy, how you would get sort of the, the data out of this queue back into a table or wherever. Yeah, well, we'll cover all the different ways. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there should have been in, where is it in the property grid? On the data cell. So, I think there's all, yeah, file and variable, you see. So, uh, I know we added that because um, other David, who's here, David Patterson. In fact, I should just open his mic and see how it's working out for him. Um, David had a, he wanted to convert lots of his update browsers, oh, sorry, update browsers, update forms uh, to um, to property grids, but to go and repaint them and rebuild them and so on and so forth would have, would have been a nightmare. Whereas if the bulk of the data and the validation is done in the dictionary, then you can get it to just basically do it straight from the dictionary. 
very, very, very quickly. That, David, I've just opened your mic. Is that, is that correct? No. Oh. I think I caught him off guard there, and they're definitely a mic issue. No. Oh no. So more for next week on that. But yes, we'll uh, we'll cover uh, the different ways of getting the data in, and obviously, more importantly, <laughs> getting the data out. Okay, shall we wrap it up? Wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Well, as always, thank you everyone for um, for attending. Um, did you? Did anyone manage to look at the 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 video editor? If you want to just send us a quick link on it, or, or uh, uh, make a, a suggestion, and then I can get the actual videos uploaded um, in the correct order. Um, yeah, I'll get you something. <laughs> okay, okay. I know what you're doing. Okay. Microsoft makes a thing. It's expression something or other, I think, and uh, it, it'll make it pretty easy. You can just clip out the middle part and then just re-encode it, and then it. Do it. Ah, brilliant! Yeah, uh, like I said, there, there was one which I used, and it was a free one, uh, just an online, very simple. But and I've used it in the past. Uh, if you remember, uh, I think uh, on one of the previous webinars, Lisa did include a license information. So of course that had to be cut out for the uh, for the recording, um, and it worked perfect. For, but for some reason, the one from a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago, I think it is now, um, just just didn't like cutting it. So. Um, You'd end up losing the rest of the uh, the webinar, uh, so pass. Well, I've got for, um, and everything like that, uh, Andy. That would do all that sort of thing. But I've got some other things that I can send across to you probably as well. Oh, if you drop them in Skype, I'm going to leave the office now and uh, and go to um, uh, move move home. But uh, you can just drop them on Skype for us, and as soon as I've got a thing, I'll, um, I'll I'll recut the video and and get them uploaded so uh, everyone's up to date. Because we have quite a few Australian yeah. users who obviously can't attend, but do like to play catch up. So I do want to, uh, you know, make sure I cover those as well for obvious reasons. Okay. So. Right. Okay. Well, once again, thank you, everybody, and uh, I shall see you next week. Okay. Right, Bye, Andy. Bye. Bye. Right, thanks for your help, Andy. Okay. No problem. Thank you.